Weekly Mining News. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And as usual, we'll do the week's news, check out the prices, and then have a chat about where a new starter can get into the industry. So for this week's news, I just wanted to cover a few of the different areas of the industry just to illustrate to new starters where they should be probably looking to try and get in and uh, which areas of the industry that is going to be in. So to start with, we'll have a look at gold. This is an article talking about the gold reserves that Australia's got and that they're all going ahead. So we're going to be uh, one of the biggest gold producers. Well, we're the second biggest gold producer at the moment, but it looks like we might turn into the biggest gold producer in the next four or five years. And if you have a look at most of the articles in the business section, it's all about gold. New companies hitting gold reserves everywhere, people looking for gold. There's more announcements on the pathway to production, so more gold mines. And again, more gold. And that's where the boom is at the moment, and that's why everybody is trying to ramp up their gold mine. And that is a good tip for a new starter, is you've got to go where the boom is, because that's where they're hiring new starters. Now, the other place that they're hiring new starters is in Nickel. And Mincor has um, just announced that they're, reop well, they're opening and commissioning a new nickel mine as well as reopening a few other old mothballed mines that they've got. And this is going to be a new underground mine and they're going to commission a new portal. So there's another couple of hundred jobs going there. The other news of the week is that um, one of the very old nickel mines around Kalgoorlie has been on sold and it looks like they're going to do some exploration down there and they're going to try and fire that back up again. And the reason nickel's so strong at the moment and everybody wants a bit of nickel is because nickel is a big component of the lithium batteries that they're trying to put in everything. Now, if we go from nickel and we go over to coal, the big news in coal was Adani changing their name, so they rebranded themselves. That was one of the big stories of the week. But the other big story is, unfortunately, China has halved their imports of coal from Australia and that's really significant for a lot of the coal mines on the east coast. That's led to, unfortunately, some of the big producers um, looking a bit well, financially tenuous. What this basically means is that they haven't sold enough coal to pay for the debt in their fourth quarter, and they've announced to the share market that they're probably not going to sell enough coal to be able to pay their bills in the fourth quarter. So what happens to Peabody's in the next six months will be very interesting, but it's pretty indicative of what's going on in the coal industry at the moment. And that's why I try and tell people that if you want to get in as a new starter, you've got to go where the jobs are and when they're ramping up, not where they're trying to consolidate mines like in the coal section at the moment. So if we take this opportunity to go over and have a look at the coal price, it's at 51.3, which in the US dollars, which is extremely low. And for those that have been watching the news for a little while, you'll, you'll know that we've already talked about about the fact that at $50 a tonne, there's a lot of mines that are going to be in trouble making a profit at that price. Now we can have a look at iron ore, and iron ore is still going strong at that 120 mark. Unfortunately, Brazil has still got production problems, which is stopping them coming back online. And like we've been saying, as soon as that comes back online, the price will drop. Now, if we go over to gold, and gold's had a pretty volatile week in US dollars, but in Australian dollars, it's still around that 2600 an ounce mark with copper coming in at 9500 and nickel is just a little bit over $21,700 a tonne. So at that price, everybody's making lots and lots of money in those areas. While coal, as I talked about before, those mines are struggling. So if you are trying to get in as a new starter, the best advice that I can give to you and the secret to getting in is to go where they have to hire new starters and give the employer what's, what they want. And what they want at the moment in Hard Rock Underground is someone that knows how their mine works. So if you come over and have a look at the sponsors training, the DIY Introduction to Underground Mining, it gives you a good outline or goes through exactly what the employers want. And I'm just going to actually go into the course in this news. So I'm just opening it up and we'll go into module two, which is how the Hard Rock Mine works. And we'll just open up the first module. And as you can see, it goes through how an open pit works. And then it talks about how we go underground. 
and then it goes into great detail about the primary ventilation and the secondary ventilation ground support and this is all important information that they've got to put into you when you go in green so if you can pitch up at the interview and you already know how all this works you've got a huge advantage over everybody else and it also strengthens your um, prospects of making it through the employment process because unfortunately with hard rock underground it's got a reputation for turning over lots of new starters and the boom that we're going through now is no different if you're going green with no mining knowledge so you haven't done any of this sort of stuff it's three and five fail in the first six months and it's purely because most people don't know what they're getting themselves into Whereas with the course, it goes into great detail exactly what you're going to get yourself into. So it just doesn't do how the mine works. It also um, teaches you how to survive the first six months and gives you lots of other tips. If you do want to have a crack at hard rock underground mining, there's lots of jobs going in the gold and nickel mines. So if we come over to our map, this is um, done for gold and you can see the hot spots and all these spots in New South Wales and Northern Queensland and WA and especially in South Australia. South Australia Olympic Dam's ramping up again. They're looking for lots of people there. But all over the country, they're looking for people in hard rock underground mines. So if you want into the mining industry, that's one of the areas that I would be looking. All you have to do is type underground into SEEK and you'll see all the jobs come up. All these truck driving jobs, the reality that situation is lots of them ask for experience but the reality is there is none so they're going to have to hire somebody with no experience if you can show them that you understand the culture and the terms used and or show them that all you have to do is put a put a little bit of practical in and they've got a productive member of crew then you're normally on to a winner but the same thing applies that if you go into the interview and you arm and are at all the mining questions the employers will be awfully polite but they'll move on if you want to know a little bit more about what the sponsor tells the employer in regards to hiring new starters, then if you come over to the Underground Training website and go onto the employer section, you can have a look at this. This is a good video to watch. It's got a lot of footage from the course in there as well, and it gives you a good idea of the standard that they expect a new starter to have if you're going to get a job out of it. So I hope that information helps and you've enjoyed the news and if you could like and subscribe the channel and if you've got any questions that you want answered please send them through. Thank you.